guys. Thanks for joining me today. I'm here to talk about coral reefs, as promised. And as usual, I apologize for background noise. I live in the city, etc., etc. So I don't have any fun props or anything. I just have books today, um, which I get a lot of requests for. So we're going to mainly focus on my coral reef or tropical fish, National Audubon Society Reef Field Guide. Okay. And I also have my handy dandy brain biology book, which I haven't cracked open in a really long time, so it was kind of fun. Um, looking at the pictures and, you know, figuring out what I was going to talk to you guys about. So most of us know what coral reefs are, most of you know what coral reefs are. Um, you've seen them on TV or you've seen them on vacation and picture in pictures. They're bright, vibrant rich, complex ecosystems in the water. There is something special about coral reefs. The warm, clear water, spectacular colors, and multitude of living things in an otherwise barren area of ocean. So what are they exactly? How do they grow? Why do they grow um, in tropical areas? What are their requirements? Um, let's dive right in. Okay. So I'm gonna flip to this chapter. Coral reefs are an organism held together by calcium carbonate. It's basically um, a <clears throat> colony of divided polyps and they are in phylum Cnidaria with sea anemones and jellyfish. So their larva is very similar. They have a larva called a plamula and that larva attaches to a hard surface, which can either be an old reef or like a rocky coast. And if it does well and metamorphoses into a polyp, that polyp will then be able to feed itself and divide into a network of polyps. That's basically what a coral reef is. It's a diverse uh, underwater ecosystem held together by calcium or limestone calcium carbonate secreted by these polyps. I'm going to show you a picture of them. Okay. This is a polyp right here and it shows the inside of it. Um, this one is actually a network. It's got, you can see the tentacles and here more closely. So a coral reef can actually feed itself by filtering the water for plankton that it will eat. It also has mesenteral filaments down in here that it can extract out of its mouth and eat or trap organisms to eat. <sighs> There's only one type of coral, re coral that um, grows and secretes calcium carbonate and it's considered um, hermatypic sclerotinian corals. There are other types of coral 
leaves, but these are the ones that form in tropical areas. The bright, brightly colored ones we think of when we think of tropical coral reefs. So, um, it's actually a living organism. Coral reefs are typically found in shallow, clear, warm waters with um, a little bit of sediment and a little bit of agitation, not too much. They're very finicky, so they're very particular about where they grow. Now, I told you that the coral can feed itself, but it does much better if it forms a symbiotic relationship with Zeus and Thale. C-O-O-X-A-N-T-H-A-L-O-A-E. T-H-A-E-L-E. And basically, I don't have any pictures of them. It's an algae that lives in the coral. And it photosynthesizes and produces nutrients for the coral. So the coral is able to secrete much more calcium carbonate when it has this algae living in its tissues. The algae benefit also. Symbiotic relationship. And hence needing the warm um, access to sunlight and uh, shallow water so that it can photosynthesize. Because even though a coral can grow on its own, it won't grow fast enough to produce the reefs that we think of. Um, there's also a fine line between uh, eroding of the reef by fish and sea urchins and accumulation of the calcium carbonate. And there's a fine balance between overgrowth of algae on the reef and not enough because the algae actually will take some of the sediments that end up in the reef and um, harden and that encrusts the sediment and also will make the reef grow but too much is not good so once again very fine line. Um, so let's look at this basically just shows the nutrient symbiotic relationship of the Zeus and Thale photosynthesizing. So, um, in warm water, there typically there are not as many nutrients as in cold water. Cold water holds more oxygen. There's usually upwelling, bringing up nutrient cold water. In the tropics, it's almost like a desert. Where these coral reefs grow, they provide um, this rich habitat that otherwise couldn't be there. So it is a really cool thing. And <clears throat> I'll get into the type of coral, coral reefs in just a moment show you a picture of them. This shows you a picture of the coral and how it grows bottom up. This shows the substrate hardening and getting bigger and bigger, pushing the reef up, growing. And they're so efficient at recycling what little nutrients are there that they're able to survive and provide home for all sorts of organisms. Let's see here. So, coral reefs are very susceptible to pollution and global warming. If it gets too hot, the algae will actually expel and the coral will lose its color. It gets its colors from the algae. 
Once the algae leave, the coral turns white, and this is known as coral bleaching. Sometimes it's temporary and the Zeus and Thale will come back, and sometimes it's permanent and the coral can't keep up, and it becomes eroded and it dies off. So it's, it's very um, temperamental, I guess you could say. <laughs> These are the regions, let me see, let me show this to you, where coral reefs grow. The red dots. Now, on the west coasts, there's usually a lot of upwelling that prevents it's too cold and deep for um, a lot of reefs to thrive. But if you look down here, there's so many in this area. And it's really good conditions for reefs to grow there. Let's look at the types of reefs. There's three main types. There's fringing reefs, barrier reefs, and atolls. Fringing reefs are basically right up against the shore. They're fringing, um, just like it sounds. And they have a reef slope uh, that can be dense. There's some wave action is good because it will bring in some nutrients, but, you know, too much is not. But they're typically on rocky shorelines that are susceptible to just a little bit of runoff. And this is a picture of a fringing reef. So here's the rocky shore and the reef. Here's mangroves. A barrier reef is very similar, except that there is usually a soft um, area between the shore and the reef that is calm, like a lagoon, where seagrass grows or whatever. There's more space. The toll reefs are basically is this where it is? It's basically like a volcano that has um, sunk and it seems the toll reefs look like they're growing in the middle of the ocean. It's like they grew on a seamount or A ring of... So here it shows the picture. So here's an island with a fringing reef around it that it's growing on and then that sinks. The island or the volcano sinks and there's just this circular atoll. So in the atoll, there's like a the blue hole and I think it's Cozumel and that's an atoll reef. Um, there was something kind of like this. There's so just a reef in the middle of the ocean, so it's got... Um, a little bit of a different structure. Okay. Now, before I get into the creatures, which is my favorite part, I'm going to show you the different shapes of the reef. brain coral, and a staghorn coral, and a spiral. Um, they have mushroom corals, pillars, maze, they have table, table corals. Let me see if I can find one of those in here. Those are like the big flat ones. Plate-like. Oh, 
reefs are basically the rainforests of the ocean. They account for maybe like 0.1% space, but they have almost 25% of ocean organisms. They have uh, everything from nidaria, echinoderms, mollusks, worms, um, turtles, fish, crustaceans. So the coral will attract organ small organisms that feed on it and burrow into it like worms which then attract larger prey. So there is a food web or food chain. And I'm sure many of you have learned about this in some sort of biology or ecology course. Um, I will look at particularly at this right here. Okay. So you have your corals and your algae that photosynthesize, so they're your primary producers, okay? They eat plankton, which attract plankton feeders like fish, sea stars. Um, they also provide detritus, which is basically decaying matter, which um, coral mucus feeders will, sea stars, crabs, fishes, worms, and grazers that graze on the algae. So, the parrotfish, for instance, loves to eat algae off of the coral reef. Here's a parrotfish right here. Um, and then it attracts predators. This is a large snail. He will eat worms and things. And then you have your sharks and your squids, which is part of your mollusk family. That is your coral reef food chain. And now we're going to look at some fun pictures of some fish. And I will say that coral reefs not only provide nutrients and uh, a variety of animals in an otherwise desert area, but they also provide a safe haven for animals passing through. Sometimes dolphins and whales and manatees might stop in. And sea turtles, they like to stop in. Say hello. Um, and a really important part of the ecosystem, because they're so efficient at nutrient recycling, and it's a shame that they're so susceptible to global warming and pollution. And as with every ecosystem, there's a fine balance. And we as humans have a responsibility to, uh, to keep them alive, I feel like. So I think that they're important. On that note, I'm going to change my angle and hope that it's not too noisy but I would really like to focus downward on and I'm going to talk to you about these animals and this is showing you pictures of reefs. This is a reef patch. I didn't show you the parts of the reefs like the pinnacles, the back slope, the front slope. I apologize, that is actually rather boring to me. Um, and the parts are kind of self-explanatory. So I apologize for anyone who's into that sort of thing. And if you have any questions, please feel free to ask in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer them. So, 
is basically just showing you different families of fish. We're going to jump right to sharks. Are the most nurse sharks and reef sharks are the most common that you'll see in the that environment. You will see a lot of stingrays too. You'll see a lot of stingrays. that they have to perform is growing at a rate that's faster than they're being eroded by either burrowers or um, grazers. So as with the algae, there's a fine line between there being too much and not enough, um, as is the case with all species on the reef. I was in a reef, coral reef, and off of one of the Bohemian Islands, and a moray eel came out, and it, I, <laughs> I was not prepared, and it really scared me. So, some other fish that um, will take advantage of burrowing in parts of the coral reef, you all have seen, probably seen clownfish. The anemones that grow on the reef provide a home for very small species of fish, such as clownfish, damselfish, butterfly and angelfish. Let's find those. Those are the tropical, very beautiful Grouper. They're very common. They're very large fish. If you go to any reef in the Caribbean, you will find grouper. Here's grouper here. I'm losing some light. Can you guys still see this? and croaker. These are all in family cyanidae. Red drum. I used to study them a lot. Snapper. Let's see. Let's find. Here's the sh some shiny fish. They're all in the same family too. Look downs, jacks, rainbow jacks, bumpers. These are little 
blennies. Those are little blennies. There. They can be really small. They're funny little things. <laughs> they like to hide and as you can see in these pictures, they like to hide in small spaces, small crevices. Um, some of the species engage in camouflage. And the way that this guide is set up is that it basically has like the different body types. And then it will show you all the fish that sort of body type. I didn't see clownfish in here. I've never looked for one. Oh, here's some big fish that might come visit. Marlin and sailfish really fast. Tunas and wahoos. Flounders. I didn't see one of those yet. Here we go. <laughs> the puffers. I don't know, looks like that's it. Ocean sunfish, these are huge. So, I might have passed the clownfish. I apologize for that, perhaps. I was a little hasty. But there's just so many fish to get through. There's no way we could go over them all, you know? I'm, I'm so sorry that we can't. But you basically get the drift. You have the really small fish that like to hide and, f and feed on um, plankton or algae. Parrotfish, for example, they actually eat the algae and by default accidentally eat pieces of the coral off and then when they use the bathroom it actually comes out as sand and it's a very soft sand and they produce something like a ridiculous amount of sand. I'll put it down in my notes um, how much sand they produce. It's a ridiculous amount of sand. Um, so coral reefs just have so many species there's just no way to go over all of the the fish and the invertebrates. Um, I do have my shell video that I made years ago on here somewhere and many of the shells that I talk about are invertebrates that are found in reefs. So if you're interested in checking that out, um, feel free. And as always, leave any questions or ideas for other videos in the comments below. And thank you for tuning in, guys. Yeah. Let me properly say goodbye. I can't. <laughs> goodbye. And um, I'll be hopefully making 